Hey everyone, today I'm going to make a canoe out of three sheets of plywood. And a bunch of other stuff. I want to say a big thanks to Michael Storer who provided me with the plans for the canoe. I'll have links to where you can find them in the description below. It's called the Quick Canoe. The first step is to mark the pieces on the plywood. I made marks 300 millimeters apart on both sides of the plywood and connected them with a long, straight piece of metal that I found in the garbage. I also needed a line 400 millimeters up from one edge to be the center line of the bottom piece, so I used one of my other sheets of plywood as a straight edge. You can see my famous hand crawling technique here, kind of like a spider with one broken leg. Next I followed the pattern and measured out a specified distance on each side of the long line at each 300 millimeter mark. And when I connect those dots, that should give me the outline of half of the bottom of the canoe. For the sides of the canoe, the measurements start right from the edge of the board at each 300 millimeter line. Marking the line for the end of the canoe was a little bit trickier. I needed to divide my last 300 millimeter segment into more segments. I could then measure out along each of those lines and make the marks to define the front curve of the canoe. Then I grabbed some skinny little nails and put a nail in each mark I just made. I grabbed a nice flexible piece of wood and held it against the nails so I could draw a smooth, smooth curve. Sometimes I didn't have enough hands to hold the strip the way I wanted, so I got some help from my vise and my knee. I got out my grandfather's jigsaw and cut out the pieces, making sure not to remove the line. This would be a good time to say that I'm not a professional woodworker, so if I'm doing something horribly wrong, please don't copy me. One thing to mention is if you're using your ping pong table as your cutting table, just maybe don't cut into it. Handy tip, I just learned. Once my pieces were cut, I used a hand plane to bring the edge right down to the pencil line. I also clamped my side pieces together to make sure that they ended up exactly the same. So in total, my three sheets of plywood gave me four side pieces and two bottom pieces. And that's just what I need for my quick canoe. From the wood that was left over, I cut three butt straps. That's right, butt straps. And two skeg doublers. I made one end of my skeg doublers nice and round by tracing around a can, and cut the other end so that once the sides were on the canoe, it would fit right up in the center there. And I routered the edges just to make everything look pretty. Next I needed to use my butt straps to make my six pieces of canoe into three pieces of canoe. And to do that, I used Arca Epoxy. A giant thanks to Noah's Marine who were super friendly and helpful and supplied me with all the epoxy products I used. I prepared by covering some sticks with tape and pounding nails into them, and pounding some nails through my canoe to hold the two halves in place. I mixed up some epoxy according to the directions, and added cotton fiber until the epoxy was the consistency of honey. I spread my epoxy honey glue all over my butt strap, and put it into place, temporarily holding it down with my amazing tape-covered wood strips. And I glued the butt straps for the sides the same way. While I was waiting for the epoxy to cure, I decided to cut some big boards into smaller boards, using my grandfather's not very awesome table saw. Note to self, gloves are better than slivers. Now these are long strips of wood, but I need to make them even longer to make my in whales and out whales on the canoe. I'm going to do a scarf joint, which in order to be strong enough, needs the length of the joint to be six times the width of the piece of wood. I stack up four strips of wood and plane them down until they're all the same angle. Then I glue them together with my epoxy. First giving a coat of epoxy with no additives to soak into the end grain, and then adding cotton fibers to make my glue paste. I wrapped some cling wrap around them and clamped them to a straight edge. Once the epoxy was cured, I cleaned up the joint with my plane. I also unnailed my plywood sheets and cleaned up the epoxy along the joint on the back, as well as around the butt straps. I made a super high-tech tool to mark a line 19 millimeters down from the top edge of the sides. I marked all the 300 millimeter marks in that top little section and then erased the rest of the line. I drilled holes along the center line of the bottom at every 300 millimeter mark. This is to help locate the keel when it goes in. Okay, now this is when I decided that I should really check whether the plywood I'm using is actually made from waterproof glue. It turned out that that thin surface laminate was not. So I bought some new wood that was way more expensive, angrily threw out my old wood, and started over. When I was finally back to where I left off, I looked like this.
I cut four temporary spreaders according to the pattern, though I may have got the angle wrong on the end, I'm not sure. Drilled some holes 6mm in from the front along the line, so that I'd be able to zip tie the ends together. I lay the two sides together, lining them up with the inside to the inside, and dusted off all the dust I could so that my duct tape would stick. I then used a bunch of strips of duct tape to duct tape the ends together, and put a zip tie through the hole to reinforce the tape so it wouldn't pop apart when I did this. I loosely screwed the spreaders in their proper places, and then got some help to flip the canoe. Hi, Mom. What you doing today? Oh, what's going on? It's going on these things. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was just going on. Thanks, Mom. I checked to see that it was level, which it wasn't, until I fixed it with some wood. Then I put on the bottom and used a combination of a few cable ties and a lot of duct tape to hold it in place. There were also a couple places where I used some tiny nails just to keep the sides lined up with the bottom. A little help from a beautiful young woman to flip it again. And more zip ties. I temporarily attached the outwales to the canoe to help it hold its shape, which was actually a little bit freaky because those pieces of wood needed quite a bit of pressure to bend around that curve and I just kept thinking something's gonna break or pop apart. But it didn't. I ended up with a kind of fancy clamp system to hold the two outwales together so it wouldn't stress the front of the boat too much. Made a cool tool out of a plastic cutting board, and made an epoxy and wood flour mix that was approximately the consistency of peanut butter, which I love to eat on toast. Not the epoxy, the peanut butter. I put it in a Ziploc bag, cut one corner off, and squeezed it out like icing. I used the round part of my special tool to make it all rounded, and the flat edge of my special tool to do up in the front. Once the epoxy had cured and was holding my canoe together, I didn't need the tape anymore, or the zip ties. I sanded the bottom flush with the sides, and then rounded off all the edges. I painted some epoxy on all the edges, and then laid down some fiberglass cloth on top of that. I added more epoxy with my paintbrush until I had enough to saturate the fabric and make it turn clear. A well-placed snip in the fabric and it folds down beautifully. Once the epoxy was tacky but not yet completely hard, I added another coat of epoxy to fill in the weave of the fabric. It's important that it's done at this time. If you wait too long, it won't chemically bond to the layer below it and will probably cause trouble later on. And once it was cured, it looked like this. Which is fine, but I wanted a nice smooth canoe, which meant I needed to sand those ridges away without sanding too much of the rest of the fabric, because that fiberglass fabric is what's adding a lot of strength to this canoe. It's very easy to sand through the fiberglass with a power sander, so once I had the edge knocked off, I sanded the rest by hand. Next I made a thicker glue paste than the paste I made for gluing the butt straps, squeezed it out along the upper edge, spread it a bit with a stick, and screwed the outwales on from the inside to hold them in place until the epoxy cured. Once it was cured, I removed all those screws and started to work on the inwales. I angled the ends of the inwales so they would fit into the point of the canoe. Once I knew they would fit perfectly, I glued them in place. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of clamps in my garage, so the only way to hold the inwales tight to the plywood was to use a bunch of screws. I did use some protective pieces of wood so that the screw heads wouldn't make a larger hole than necessary. I cut some fancy angles on the center spreader, tested its fit, and then screwed and glued it into place. I also did something that wasn't in the plans and put this triangle piece right up at the front. That way I'll be able to drill a hole right through the tip of my canoe and it won't allow any access from the outside. I glued down my skeg doublers and took out two of the temporary spreaders. I cut off the outwales, planed them flush, and sanded, and sanded, and sanded. Then I drilled a big old hole through my special triangular pieces. I deviated from the plan a bit when I made the knees, which are the triangular decks at each end of the canoe. I thought it would look nice to have them flush with the inwales, so I routed out a little channel along the edge. I made a cardboard template first to make sure it would fit, and then traced and cut it out from my plywood. I added a strip of wood under the open edge to give it some extra strength because that's a natural point to lift and move the canoe from. 
Once everything fit perfectly, I epoxied it all together. I used some C-clamps to clamp the knee to the strip of wood, and some kind of made up clamps to clamp the knee properly against the inwales. Once the epoxy was cured, I did some more sanding. And some more sanding. Since holes in boats aren't a great idea, I filled them all, some with just epoxy, and some with an epoxy matchstick combination, which would later get planed down to give me some neat diamond-shaped designs. The only holes I didn't fill were the ones down the center line of the bottom. To strengthen and protect the outside of the boat, I squeegeed on a very thin layer of epoxy. If I was going for a really cheap quick canoe, I could skip this step, but I would rather take the extra time and expense and make this canoe last a good long time. Once the first coat was tacky, I gave it a second layer and then a third layer. I did the same thing on the inside of the boat, but I only gave it two coats because it wasn't actually going to be the part that was underwater. The epoxy looks beautiful when it's cured, but I still need to protect it from UV rays, which means a coat of paint or varnish. And in order to make sure the paint or varnish sticks properly, that's right, I have to sand the whole thing again. I cut out the skegs, which took a bit of shaping to get them to fit the bottom contour of the canoe correctly. And then I glued the skegs to the keel strip, lining up the marks I had made when I tried it on the boat. I made some marks just a little wider than the keel, on either side of the holes in the bottom of the canoe, so I'd know when the keel was centered between the two of them. I then glued up the keel and laid it in place. Having a helper would have been really helpful at this point, but I was able to set it down carefully in the right place. I used some temporary screws through the bottom holes to hold the keel in place until the epoxy cured. Once cured, I cut a nice curve in the front and the back, which again, would have been easier with a helper. I cut along my mouth drawn line and sanded the keel until it looked beautiful. I took out the temporary bottom screws and filled all the holes except for the ones in the skeg doubler. I filled those holes with stainless steel screws dipped in epoxy. I also used some epoxy dipped stainless steel screws to replace my temporary ones in the center spreader. I pulled out my HomeRite Finish Max Super Sprayer, which I love, and which I have because HomeRite kindly sent it to me, and I sprayed the outside of my canoe red. Because that's the color of canoe we had when I was a kid. I wanted to keep the natural wood look on the inside so I covered that with a couple layers of marine varnish. I wasn't sure about the seat placement I wanted, so I made some temporary seats and took the canoe out for a paddle. And once I had figured out the spacing, I went home and made some permanent seats. I made a couple pieces of wood that were tapered on one side to match the angle of the canoe hull. I could have just left those strips sitting on top, but I decided to make more work for myself, so I marked and cut some channels. Of course, those needed to be cut at an angle as well, so yeah, more time. I sanded off the varnish I had previously applied, and finally glued the seats in place. And that is my quick canoe. Again, a big thanks to Michael Storer for the plans and to Noah's Marine for the epoxy supplies. I only had a chance to use this canoe one time before the actual seats were in last fall. I was very pleasantly surprised with how well it paddled. It went straight when I wanted it to go straight and it turned when I wanted it to turn. It's also extremely stable and has enough room for our four person family to fit in it. I wouldn't exactly call it a quick canoe for the amount of time it took me to build, but that's because I spent a lot of time making everything look pretty. I would guess that half my canoe building time was probably spent just sanding stuff. So if you didn't epoxy the boat, you'd probably save a lot of time. Personally, I'm glad I took the extra time to make it look really nice, because when you're out in beautiful nature, you might as well be in a beautiful canoe. Thanks for watching. See ya.